Hey guys, welcome to Business Wednesday. This is Norma Williams, uh, and this is At Home with Norma. And I decided to do this a little over a month ago. And we have uh, decided that Wednesdays are specifically going to be geared toward entrepreneurs, wannabe entrepreneurs, people with business ideas, and uh, maybe also business professionals who aren't exactly happy with where they are in the world right now. And so I'm pretty excited, I'm pretty darn excited about doing this every Wednesday. So here's the deal, here's a little bit of a recap. I've owned my business for what's going to be 15 years in just a couple of weeks here. And I want to be able to pass on some of the wisdom and the knowledge that I've been able to gain uh, through experience. I've had, over the course of those years, I have probably have had a hundred people come through the doors of this company. And so I believe that I know a lot about people and I certainly want to be able to um, be a blessing and to do some teaching on this, I think, very, very needed subject. Now, I like to uh, put out a disclaimer. I'm a Christian, and so certainly my Christian beliefs and principles are infiltrated into every area of my business. But if you are not, I say, please do not throw out the baby with the bathwater. There is so much that you can glean from this. Hi, Eva Lisa. And I get to be so close. I have a different camera today than I did yesterday. And so I love this because I get to um, I get to say hi and to see faces and names, and I think that's super important. I, I was going to wait for a couple of more people to go on, but Evelisa, if it is just you and me and people need to catch it on the replay, I think that this is still super important, and I'm absolutely looking forward to hearing about other people's adventures in entrepreneurship. Hey, Amy, how are you, my darling? I'm super excited. Now, here's what I would like for you guys to do, um, and I hope to say this again in a little bit, but I would like for you to possibly share with the audience what some of your business ideas are. So obviously, I own a construction company, so if it had been me and I had started my business, I'd say I'm interested in construction, or if it's design, or if it's food, or whatever your business idea is, by all means, please share it. I'd like other people to know that... Um, that there's a whole list of people who are hungry, who are ready to get out of the rat race of just working and who are ready to live and thrive. So uh, by all means, if you're at all interested, you have something that you want to share, please do so. And then from here, I wanna jump in. So this is technically my third day or third time I should say uh, presenting business, business principles and ideas. And just so that you guys understand how serious I am, I literally have a laptop full of um, notes and I have a notebook also full of notes. And even today, I was taking notes on my phone. And I wanna say that because I think it's important to know that I don't just get up here and then spew, um, that I take time, I pray over these sessions and I really think about every single thing that I would have loved to have known 15 years ago when I was starting my business. And so I'm essentially just trying to uh, impart some of these um, nuggets of information to you. Okay, so let's get started. So the title of today's lesson is uh, Goals versus Vision. Now it can also be goals and vision, quite frankly, because both of these are um, areas that we need to discuss. And, and certainly I'd like us to have a, a clear understanding of what the differences are um, <clears throat> for us, especially as believers. Your vision is that supernatural download, that information that you get from an external source. So a vision is a word, a, a prophetic word, it's a dream, it is a supernatural download that you have gotten that um, is information for you that is non-negotiable. So I will give you a for example, when I started this business 15 years ago, the Lord gave me a clear download that he wanted me to start this construction company. Now, I did not just, hey, Randall, hey, uh, Robert, uh, welcome. I'm glad you guys are on today. Uh, so we're talking about the difference between visions and goals or vision and goals. 
goals. And so vision is non-negotiable, but vision can um, mutate and it can grow, but the core of the vision will not change. Now, the difference between goals are, goals are generally internally set. They're set by you. They're things that you were hoping to do. Goals are those things that you think that you need, and they could be good. By no means are we saying that goals aren't great, but we want to differentiate between my visions and my goals. So I'm gonna kind of give you an example. So for me, my vision is own a construction company. In the beginning, the few goals that I had were touch a couple of single moms, make sure I have enough money to pay the mortgage, or at the time it would have been rent, uh, um, make sure that the quality of my work is great. Those things are fine, but quite frankly, that those goals were uh, easily obtained. And so goals will constantly change, they'll constantly evolve, um, goals will come, goals will go. Sometimes you'll set a goal and you'll get halfway through that goal and you'll realize, oh hey, the thought process I had on that goal actually isn't the space where I need to be traveling. Hopefully that makes sense. Your vision, the overreaching vision will not change. Now, I knew that one of the visions that I had from, for this business from the very beginning was that I would have a strong mentoring relationship with women. In 15 years of business, that absolutely has not changed. Now, it has, um, it's morphed into something far greater than I could have ever thought, but by no means has that vision come and then gone. Hopefully that kind of makes sense to you. All right, so now, hey, Dana, we're talking about visions and goals. And so if you're thinking about at all starting a business and this is something that you're wanting to do, last week we talked about the deep, deep importance of understanding that you need to have a book, a notebook. And so I talked about understanding that you have to have a place where, especially if your business has not already begun, and let's say that you're still in just the, um, you know, kind of fishing expedition portion of your business, you're writing down, you know, um, uh, patterns. These are some things I want to do. This is what I, I'm hoping. This is maybe a vision that I've gotten that I, I, I want to uh, see come to fruition. Um, anything, hey, James Kelly, anything along those lines. You need to make sure, and so just for, like I said, for some simple recap, we talked about that. The week before, we talked about the urgency of understanding your personality. Now, I'm going to tell you this because this simply will not change over the course of time. Starting a business is not for the faint of heart, but it is absolutely one of the most beautiful things you will ever do not just for yourself but it's one of the most beautiful things that you will ever do for your family and so part of why I'm always talking about uh, hey Maria part of the reason that I'm literally always talking about understanding what your personality type is is because even when you're setting your goals and your vision if you are dealing with massive insecurity, your insecurities are going to be um, influenced, or rather your visions and your goals are going to be influenced by those insecurities. Now, I'm gonna tell you this, if you don't get a handle and a lock on who you are, whose you are, how you were created, and what your ticking points are, every portion of your business is going to be affected, which is why you hear me say this, constantly constantly so hopefully by now if you guys have not seen the two previous videos we have done on business please take this time and do so I'm definitely encouraging everyone to have some personality assessments you need to know why you tick another thing that I highly recommend is that you understand if even if you or even separate from what some of these personality assessments will um, convey to you, I highly recommend that you in your notebook, remember we talked about this last week, you, this place where you're gonna start to write out, down all your ideas. Even in this place, I highly recommend that one of the exercises that you do is to understand, hey, what are some of my ticking points? So I realize that I'm reactionary when I'm XYZ. And so one of the things that I try to teach 
pH is the difference between being a thermostat or being a thermometer, right? So a thermostat, um, uh, okay, let's say I want to make sure I get this right. A thermometer um, is kind of develops, right? You just put that in your mouth and, 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 um, um, and you, you take your temperature and, um, I'm, I'm obviously tired of having a brain fart. Let me, let me try this again. The difference between a thermostat and a thermometer. Okay, a thermometer um, determines what the environment is, whereas a thermostat uh, sets the environment, okay? So you want to be a thermostat. You want to set your environment, and you cannot set your environment if you are willy-nilly every time something goes wrong or amiss in your life. And so guess what? Uh, owning a business, starting a business is one of the most amazing ways for you to work on personal development. And do you know why? Because this is probably one of the keen times in your life that you will have to deal with rejection, especially at the beginning. We talked about this last week. Hey, Marie, I love you. One of the things that we talked about last week was, you know, understanding the importance of being thick skinned, thick skinned. In business, if you are not thick-skinned, then every time someone gets around to telling you no about something, you will take it personally. Okay, I want to make sure that even as I'm talking to you, I'm writing notes because I feel like my brain is going faster than, um, than some of the things that I'm uh, kind of saying with my mouth. Um, so understanding the difference between being thick-skinned. We all have a target audience. Now, I don't want to get too lost, so I'm going to write target audience so that I remember that I want to come back to this. Listen to me. When you start a business, you know, the Bible says that we, um, that the Lord really appreciates humble beginnings. Well, let me tell you about the power of a humble beginning. Oftentimes, our mistakes, our failures, our um our, our tendency to get off track is going to happen in the early in the early months, in the early weeks, in the early days of trying to finagle starting a business. That's a good thing because while your influence is um, limited, if you will, that's a good thing because now you basically you you created an opportunity for you to make. Like I said, some mistakes, but even understanding that in the making of the mistakes, right, my audience isn't so isn't so broad, and I have an opportunity to develop the thing it is that I am trying to do for my business. And so these are the things that are critical. If, for example, you have a well, let's take Marie, right? Marie has a baking business, a cooking business. She's a she's a coaching business, and in her coaching business, she's able to encompass. Uh, health and wellness into all of these avenues. Okay, so let's say that Marie meets someone that she thinks would be a good fit for her business, but let's say that person isn't interested in being healthy or whole or eating well. So if Marie, per uh, um, if she approaches that person and that person puts their hand up like, I don't want to, no, I don't want that. It's easy for us, right, in our insecurities to take the rejection and make it about us. But Marie may not understand that this potential client may have been dealing with who knows what in her personal life. She may have come from an environment where uh, food um, <clears throat> was used as an abusive tool because I've seen that happen. It could be that uh, she is has a lot of guilt from childhood or whatever reason. And so if, if Marie makes what's happening to Susie about Marie, then every time Marie runs into a type of a Susie, it's going to set her back. I'm going to tell you guys a story because I think this is, and this is really, really key. <coughs> Some years ago, about 10 years ago or so, I ran into a gentleman who um, asked me about the fact that we had like pink sweatshirts and I think my logo was somewhat pink <clears throat> at the time. And he said to me, I have a tickle in my throat. <coughs> he said to me, he said, you know, I probably wouldn't hire you because I don't like all that girl power stuff. Now I'm going to tell you that I walked away feeling very defeated and um, I wanted to run from the pink and I, I wanted to run from certain things that 
um, that I had been doing and exploring in my business. Some, I, I can't remember now if it was weeks later or months later, I was a part of a women's group and all of the women were women entrepreneurs. And I was explaining to one of the other women that this, this conversation had happened with this gentleman and, you know, I, I, hadn't, I hadn't been able to kind of shake it off. And very, very casually, she kind of, you know, thought, and then she looked at me and she said, well, what do you care what he thinks? He's not your target audience. And I said, I'm sorry, say that again. And she said, Norma, your gifting is for women. And if you're male clients, that's great, but that's not your target. Your target is to hit the hearts of women. And when you hit the hearts of women, they are going to care about whether or not your logo is pink. And they're not going to care if you're a group of girls because instead they're going to receive what you have because what you have is for them, okay? So in understanding your business and understanding what we go back to kind of goals and back to vision, one of the things that you're going to have to understand is who is your target audience? So if you have a, your piece of paper, right, and we talked about this, if you're going to be a part of this every week, every week you need to know that you need to have your, okay? So on one side, you're going to have goals, and the other side, you're going to have vision. And you'll know, again, you'll know the part that's the vision because what's going to happen is <clears throat> those are the things that are going to be unshakable, whether it's a day or a year or 10 years. The vision will remain. Now, it may seem as if you've gotten off the road, but I promise you that all of the life experiences that you have are going to wrap yourself back to the vision. So for me, under vision, I have to write women because that, that portion of my vision is never going to be... Um, change. Now, the road, right, the road that I'm going to take to get to women, that certainly may change. So in the beginning, it started with design. It certainly started with painting, but then it started with flooring. Then it was like, hey, I'm going to work with women on electrical. Now, my desire and my dream is to purchase <clears throat> housing and to build housing and to rehab housing and to put single moms in those houses. Now that was not a vision that I had 15 years ago, right? The vision, the staid, simple vision that has never changed is my vision on women. But all of the goals about how I'm gonna help women and, and how I'm gonna help the single mom and what impact I can have in her life and how am I gonna mentor her and how am I gonna make her life better? All of those are going to happen within the goals section. So hopefully we've talked enough about that where you feel like, no, that totally makes sense. So now <clears throat> you have an idea of what you want your business to be. Now you understand that you need to be writing down. You need to be working all week between today and next, um, between today and next Wednesday, you need to be working on if I was going to start this business, who's my goal and what are my goals and what are my visions? And listen, it's okay. As time goes on, let's say that you say, gosh, you know, I didn't have like this download like you did, you know, and I did. You know, I just knew my, my, um, my life is about helping women. So I knew that. If you don't have that yet, don't fret. As you begin to write down your goals and you begin to write down your vision, what's going to happen is you're going to start to see some common denominators. Remember, we talked about that. These common denominators, they won't change. But what's going to happen is you're going to start to carve out for yourself something. Hey, Angela. Hey, Lisa. So just understanding that. Okay. Now, you have to do your homework. At the end of the day, this will just be a lecture or a speech if you and I are not partnering and understanding some of the things that you need to do to get this business off the ground, right? So now that you've gotten your visions and your goals, I want to take you back to the uh, homework assignment I gave you last week. Here's what I said. I said, do not get out of bed without dreaming for five minutes. Remember I said that when you wake up every morning and your brain is fresh and before anything in your, in your world has infiltrated that and before the heaviness in your heart comes, I 
I cannot tell you how significant this assignment is. This assignment I would have your children do. I would have your girlfriends do. I would have your guy friends do because this is very, very critical. There's a lot that's jarbled up into the mind that doesn't get clarity until it goes from here to here. And if you're not writing your visions and making them plain, what's going to happen is you'll always feel like you're in a you have a half a statement or a half of an idea. There is something about putting your vision and your goals on paper that allows you to see how much how okay how much how much how much of of, a, of this thought is complete how much of this goal is possible and doable with the resources that i have right now now when you're dreaming and i said um i said when you start practicing this process in the beginning it is incredibly awkward i cannot say that enough it is incredibly awkward to just lay in the bed and allow yourself to dream anything you want but the exercise is going to allow your brain to release some things that you didn't realize that you were holding on to. And again, as we begin to put them down in visions and goals, what's going to happen is you're going to come back to these things that, and you're going to be able to look, you know, a, a couple of weeks from now and you're going to say, wow, I didn't even realize that that was something I wanted or something that I wanted to do. So hopefully, um, Hopefully that makes some sense to you. I wanted to uh, talk about some other things. Um, uh, okay, so I have, again, I, I have an entire list of things and I've been really working so hard on um, trying to make sure that all of the things that I wish that I had known when I had first started my business, some of these things, so some of this stuff is what I like to call critical thinking. Listen to me, you have to be working on personal development. Okay, so um, I have already recommended some books. I think I've rec uh, recommended a few things. Go back into some of those first shapes um, and listen to some of those teachings. And if you have any questions about it, certainly I want you to uh, feel free to reach out to me. Okay, I wanna talk about um, we said, okay, handling rejection well. We went over that. We went over um, developing thick skin, um, humble beginnings. A again, you know, understanding that um, don't be offended, right? If your audience isn't there right away, allow yourself to uh, be creative in how you handle things. And by all means, um, love people. Listen to me. Business owners understand that they are providing a service or a um, or a tangible good for the benefit of the customer. So I am not starting a business because it is for me. Do you understand that I provide a service for the customer? Whenever I forget that, I am absolutely less likely to um, make them make my customer feel like they are loved. If you go into business feeling like it's about you. Oh, well, I'm going to do this and I'm going to make this amount of money and I'm going to, you're going to be in trouble. So one of the things that I'd love for you to put under vision is that you are going into business to provide a service again, or you're selling a good, whatever it is, that thing, that reason that you're going into business, you have to make sure that that is a, a service or a good that you think that you can offer into to consumers um, with a spirit of excellence. So you have to remember that people are looking for solutions in the world. I like to say God created you to be a solution in the world. So your experience, your creativity, your desire, your personality, all of these things are packaged into a, uh, an opportunity for you to be the best version of you you can be. So when I like to say that when people are um, coming and calling Excellence by Design, for the most part, people can't even remember the name of my company, but they always remember my name. For a long time, people would call, the, they would just put Norma, you know, and they'd say, what's your last name? Because they would put that on the check and I'd say, you know, my company's name is actually Excellence by Design. It took forever. Why? Because when people decided that they wanted to hire me, they were buying, and even to this day, they are buying me. They're buying my reputation. They're buying my service of excellence. They're buying my, you know, uh, two decades worth. Hey, Michelle, 
They're buying my two decades worth of um, experience. Especially while your business is being cultivated or the ideas of your business are being cultivated, you want to start working on your craft or service. I, I've said this again, give the service free to your family members, give the service or trade or the good free to the people that you love that have the most influence in your life. Not because you need them to approve the business venture, we talked about that, but simply because you need them to approve the quality of the business venture. We don't need their opinion about whether or not uh, your business should be a business. Remember, we talked about that. We never ask someone who has not um, sh stretched themselves to start a business or, or to do something completely out of the box. We'll never ask someone like that um, whether or not our business ideas are good ideas. That's not what we're doing. But we do want to know their opinion on the quality of the goods and services that we are trying to render. So that's kind of understanding that. So I want to check this, that kind of we had talked about that humble beginnings, understanding what our customers need, repeating after me, it's not about me, it's not about me, it's not about me. So right now I have a client and the client is allowing me to not just provide the services. And this particular client, we are doing tile work, we're doing trim work, we're doing massive wall repair, we're doing paint work, we got some carpet, we've got some um, additional flooring that's going in. Okay, the client is allowing me to make 100% of the design decisions. That's great, except that what did I tell you? It's not about me. So even though I'm making all the decisions, I'm not making decisions for a 51-year-old Puerto Rican girl and, and all of the things I like, right? So I love green, I love plaid, I love, I love French country, I love flowers. Well, this client, these are urban males. So yes, they're giving me the freedom of designing, but they're giving me the freedom to provide them with the best service they can have. And so when you're providing for your service or your good, hey, Reuben, when you're providing for your service and your good, you have to remember, even though, hey, Kenny, even though um, I'm providing this service and this good, I'm providing this, oh my gosh, hello, everybody, a uh, Henico, uh, even though I'm providing the service and this good, I'm providing the service and this good based on what you need, based on what my client needs. I am not providing a good or a service based on what I need. So if let's say that your business of choice is, uh, let's say creating footwear, okay? So if you have a strong desire to create, create footwear and you know that you want your target audience to be a um, middle-aged woman, for example, you're not going to build a type of shoe that you love. So you may not say, hey, I'm going to build a six-inch stiletto and it's going to be strappy because as a middle-aged um, businesswoman, I can't do anything with that. And so even as you're developing your desire, you're developing your trade or you're developing your good, you have to know who you are developing it for, okay? So if, if you can get that answered, it's going to be easy to find out who your consumer is and you won't waste your time on uh, trying to sell your good or your services on people who don't need them. So hopefully that makes a lot of sense. I'm not getting a whole lot of comments today, so I'm just assuming that y'all are, are just listening. Um, but hopefully, hey Val, um, but hopefully you understand that. All right, I think um, I tried, gotta hop off, I have a meeting. <laughs> good message, ah, ah, love you Marie. All right, actually, so I'm actually, um, man, what, what is 30 minutes ago? 30 Okay, I am thinking about moving. I am. I'm, I want to work with um, understanding schedules. I want to work with um, wondering whether the timeline for our my business night should stay at six thirty. Um, as you guys know, I cook Monday, Tuesdays, and Thursdays, and then on Friday I do something different. But on Wednesdays, I'm considering moving my um, my business talk to eight p.m. Um, to give people a chance to get home and eat and all of that stuff. Hi, Emily. I love you so much and I miss you. Hey, Tina, my sweet love. How are you? Um, so I, that's kind of one of the things that I want to say. 
Um, but we're at the end already and there were so many aspects of today that I wasn't able to cover so we will definitely cover these next week. If you weren't here in the beginning and starting a business is something that you want to do, make sure that when you meet me here next week you have a notebook and pen and even I'm taking notes all the time. So let's help with each other. Hey Lucky, how are you? All right guys, I hope you have a great night. Um, please work on your visions and your goals and bring them with you next week. If I decide that we are going to have a different time change, I will let you know in advance. And lastly, tomorrow we're back in the kitchen making Puerto Rican flan. I cannot wait. It's my mother's recipe and uh, it is fantastic. All right, I love you guys. God bless you. Jesus loves you. Get out there. Start your businesses. I am here for you and you can do it. I'll talk to you guys later.